Hello world, today's quest is taking us to Carowinds in Charlotte, North Carolina to check out a few things. The first thing I want to do is give you an update on any of the scare zones and mazes that are being built for Scarewinds, which starts next weekend. The second thing I want to take a look at is any of the construction that they've started for Aeronautica Landing. So let's go inside and check out those two things and have ourselves a good old time. We've almost made it up to the gate, but before we do, I wanted to remind you that, Sk that Carowinds is my home park and I do a lot of videos on it. So if you're interested in Carowinds and Scarewinds videos and even some Charlotte area videos, you might want to hit the subscribe button because more will be coming. You know what's scarier than a 325 foot drop? Carowinds is now turned into Scarewinds. You can see the big red S out in front of the C as well as they put out some pumpkin props out here. I always like seeing this happen. Big red S means it's about Halloween time. We made it right in through the gates and we're already hit with some Scarewind stuff. Looks like some old castle work and the stage even has like an old castle up there. It's ready for the show that they're gonna have. I don't see any merch over here at the Premier store. No Scarewinds merch yet. I wanted to get a better shot of the stage, but I was told I was not allowed to film the stage yet. So, I don't know why, but we will be coming back out here on Thursday for a media preview and I can get a closer look then. I just caught something over here I wanna show you. Check out this prop. We have some jack-o'-lanterns here and a big old cauldron and a large pumpkin on this side. Over in front of Harmony Hall, we've got this creepy skeleton standing right in front of the cemetery here. And these tents are usually little carnival games for kids to play. They do cost extra, but they have some pretty neat prizes. We've made our way over to Camp Snoopy, which is normally the kids' area. They've got a few props set out right there. We're going to go check them out in a second, but this is going to be where the scare zone called uh, Tricksters is. And it says the Tricksters have forgotten their pillowcases for candy at home. Any chance you can lend them a hand, arm, or head? You're not going to want to knock on any of the doors on the street even though there is a lot of buzz around the neighborhood. So yes, this will be a scare zone for Scarewinds. As soon as you come into Camp Snoopy, you get to see these pumpkins on the right hand side right near the balloons all painted up to Charlie and the gang. And if you go move to the other side, you got even bigger pumpkins themed up to Charlie and his friends. In the back of Camp Snoopy, right next to the teacups and right underneath the Intimidator is going to be Depths of Darkness. You see that building peeking up over there? Now sometimes the entrance is on this side and sometimes it's over in front of the Camp Snoopy sign. And I don't know uh, where it's going to be this year because they don't have any signage up yet. But uh, Depths of Darkness, to give you a little info on that, is a really dark scare maze. Okay, so it's really pitch black in a lot of places and they say that the walls feel like it's closing in on you and a serial killer is loose. So they've had this house before. I really enjoyed it last year and uh, I think I'm going to enjoy it this year. Now Camp Snoopy also has a few of these little rickety looking houses up as decorations and I'm guessing that like it's going to be used for tricksters, the scare zone, but it's nothing too scary that it can't sit out during the normal day. I'm telling you, this prop is everywhere. There's one right there, and there's two down here towards Woodstock Express. And there's a lot more all scattered throughout this little area as well. All right, we decided to make a little pit stop here at Harmony Hall and grab us some food, and then get back at it once we're done. Now, what do I want to eat today? I think I'm gonna get the barbecue here. Last time I got it, I got it without a bun, and it was really good. The area right where you get the poke bowls, has some really good looking desserts. My goodness. Dinner does look good. I did go with the pulled pork after I stuck my finger in it. And it um, looks really good. My wife got the poke bowl. And then my daughter got some grapes to add on with some of the food she's gonna eat off of our plates. But I also wanted to show you there is some Scarewinds decorations here at Armony Hall. All right, we're finished with dinner, and I must say my barbecue was really good. It had a really good smoke taste to it, and the barbecue was enjoyable as well. Macaroni and cheese almost tasted homemade. I really enjoyed that too. Now the poke bowl that my wife got, I enjoyed the poke bowl all except for the shrimp. thought the shrimp was a little bit dry, and I think I would maybe go with something else next time we got it. 
But all in all, it was all right. We're gonna go out and look for some more scare winds and Halloween stuff here at Carowinds. I wanted to go this direction after dinner because there is a scare maze and a scare zone in there I wanted to show you, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how Carowinds is open during the day during scare winds. It's not gonna be scare winds. It's just gonna be regular Carowinds with Great Pumpkin Fest. And Carowinds is gonna close two hours before Scarewinds starts. And you're gonna have to leave the park, they'll secure the park, and you're gonna have to go out in the parking lot or go out to grab some food or something. And I asked this person over here in the tent if you were allowed to stay in the VIP tent during that two hour break. And she told me, no, you had to exit Carowinds for that two hours while they get ready for Scarewinds. Underneath Nighthawk, we're gonna find Ripper Alley, and this is one of the scare zones at Scarewinds. Now, they have had this scare zone before. It is about London, England, and in this part of London, England, it's supposedly forgotten by everyone else, and demons and ghosts and things have taken up this area. So this is a lot of fun. We've had it before last year. And um, it's right underneath. Actually, while I'm at it, Nighthawk is still not working, but we do have trains over here. But let's go ahead and look at this. Look at the clock tower up there. That's pretty cool. I don't think that's... Is that the correct time? No, it is not the correct time. Maybe it is in England, but it, it is not the correct time for Charlotte, North Carolina. But this is pretty detailed. They have people standing out, jumping out of these corners at you. And there's some gargoyles right there. Let's go take a closer look at them. Nice. And then if you walk over here, they have a jail and a livery or livery. I don't know how you call it. But when you exit Ripper Alley right underneath the Sky Tower, it's going to be our uh, scare maze over here. And at the walkway right here is gonna be Tooth Fairy. And it is a really fun house, or scare maze for scare winds. I think it was new last year. It's about the uh, Tooth Fairy going after parents who don't believe in her. She has dental assistance and things to extract those teeth from parents. And even though this stuff is closed right now, I did do a video on some of these mazes last year. So if you're interested in that, I will put the link to that video down below. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you cannot film in the scare mazes or the scare zones last year. So you're not going to see like a, me walking through it or anything. But you'll at least see a little bit closer of a look of the outside and get my opinion on it. So you might want to travel over there and watch that video. Headed up the hill to Boo Blasters. They've got this awesome little collection of pumpkins that looks like a skeleton. And then when you turn this way, they have a lar another large skeleton like the one we saw earlier. And some jack-o'-lanterns sitting at its feet. Our next scare zone is going to be right in front of Boo Blasters and Chick-fil-A. And it is called Outlaw's Revenge. It's a Wild West theme about cheaters, you know. People cheating at card games. And they, you know, paid the price for it. You know, wouldn't you just absolutely freak out if somebody jumped out right now? It's not like Scarewinds isn't even running. I think we'd have a cleanup on all three if that happened to me. They've got a livery or livery. I don't know how you call that. Please educate me because I've been asking for like three years how to say that. They're probably going to have maybe some music or something in this gazebo right here as well. They've got a little hotel down here next to this shop and a big old barricade right where you're supposed to head down to Southern Star and Plants vs. Zombies. Now I did a little bit of a video on this earlier. This is going to be a new area called Aeronautica Landing. And I'm going to take you up to the top and show you down over top of all of this, right near where um, Afterburn is. And while I walk up there, I'm going to play you a video of what Aeronautica Landing is supposed to be. We made it up to the afterburn. I hope you all enjoyed that video. Looks like the Plants vs. Zombie building is still intact and a lot of everything else is just pretty much leveled. It looks like a, a parking lot out here. There's a lot of rubble out there. 
but this is where that area I just showed you is going to be. Now they're going to have five new flat rides and it's going to be themed up with like a airplane theme and all and they're even going to have a restaurant or so and I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. It's kind of nice to see something new over here. Not a lot of people ventured into this section of the park so it'll be neat to have a, an incentive for people to come over here and ride these new rides. Now I did cover this area pretty much in depth as soon as they released the news on my Instagram. So if you're interested in getting news quicker, I suggest following me on Instagram. I'll put the, the link or the name of it, the account right on the below of this screen. So you just follow me there. During the time Scarewinds is running, they also have a kid-friendly Halloween event here at Carowinds called the Great Pumpkin Fest. And these shacks right here are where kids can go and hold out a little bag and get some free candy, kind of like they're trick-or-treating. And if you go through this building right here, Bailey's Barnyard, there's also some activities to do. There's a doorway right over here where that uh, roof is. And there's some activities that kids can do, like coloring. They have little things they can climb on and stuff. It's a lot of fun. I also have a video on that if you're interested in that. I will also put it down in the description and or the comments below for you to watch that video and see what it's like. Now, I also want to remind you that I'm going to be doing some current videos on these events this year as well. So I keep saying watch per last year's video, but if you want to watch this year's video, once it's made, you might want to hit the subscribe button so that you get kind of notified and it shows up in your feed and you can watch what this stuff is like for 2022. Panda Express has its own scarecrow. Over next to Blue Ridge Country Kitchen, we have our new scare maze called Paranormal Inc. We're gonna zoom in on the name right here. It says Hayden Hill Sanitarium, and it looks like it was made in 1864. Now, the, the description of this scare maze says, embark on a bizarre and paranormal adventure as you investigate Hayden Hill, an abandoned hospital where patients were tortured for decades by deranged doctors and nurses. Demonic spirits of the murdered victims have been detected throughout the mysterious halls while evil medical staff prowl for new patients to torture. I don't know, hospitals scare me a little bit, so this is gonna be a little bit fun. I kinda like the idea of this house, or scare maze. I can't wait to see it in person this weekend. Looks like they have a new bungalow system here where for $80 you can get like a shaded area that comes with a table, four chairs, lockable storage box, and more. And that is in the back of the area right next to Blue Ridge Country Kitchen. Right there they are. There's three of them that I see right now. But also, this scare zone right here, Dead Man's Landing, the pirate themed one, is no more this year. It is not on the list and they haven't started decorating yet, so it is not going to happen for 2022. Down in the county fair, we have another scare zone called Harlequin Club. This looks a little bit like what was over there next to um, Copperhead Strike in that area that they're now renovating. But let's walk around and check out this scare zone. Look, they even have a stage here right in front of Rock and Roller. So there's going to be a little show here, I'm guessing. We have a circus car here. Let's see what's inside. Looks like a bunch of old circus posters. I don't know if you can see from that glare, but we've got some old pictures here, like a knife thrower. That's kind of cool. But yeah, mostly old posters. And over here we have another circus car that looks like the one they used to put monkeys in. They were like deranged looking monkeys. Am I right on that? Does anybody remember the monkeys in this cart? But there are no monkeys in there right now. So I don't know if they'll come later or if it's just going to stay like this. We've got some pumpkins painted up like the Scarewinds S over here. In front of Ricochet, we've got Grave Walkers. I'm going to read you the description for that. It says, some guests never want to leave Carowinds. We totally understand, but some stay for a lifetime and beyond. When nighttime falls, these gory guests smelling of rotting flesh they're clothed in ramble through the, the screen park on a mission for nourishment. You. Now there's lots of places that they can jump out and scare you in this scare zone. And just trust me, if you see a funny looking bush that you're kind of confused about, it looks a little bit different, slowly walk up to it and get as close as you can to it and focus on it. It's something special and I want you to find out what it is. Now we've come up on one of my favorite scare mazes. It's called Slaughterhouse. 
Now, last year this was called Slaughterhouse the Final Cut, so I thought it was leaving. But this year it's also called Slaughterhouse the Final Cut. Now this house is about a pretty messed up butcher place and there's lots of carcasses and things on the ground and the butchers, some of the butchers are wearing big pig heads. It is wild. It's one of my favorite houses here. So I'm definitely gonna be hitting this up for sure. Over at the Hurler, we're gonna go to a scare zone called Blood Yard. They do have a little show up here and it is about a junkyard that's being ran by a bunch of bloodthirsty vampires. I don't know who Thompson is, but it looks like he's in on this too. Let's go back here and check out this graffitied up cop car here. Oh man, somebody's inside of it. Hey, you can't park here. It looks like they've got the signage up for Silver Scream Studios Condemned. The walkway for this scare maze will be right behind the, the Fury lockers. And if you're wondering, it is about you stumbling upon a building out in the middle of the woods where a director filmed his final video of where he killed the actors. And you're gonna go inside and investigate. This scare maze has been uh, reused a lot in the past, but it's pretty good. Let me tell you a story. I'm afraid it's a little bit gory. <laughs> I told the it's pretty big. like you, get out of here, skidoo. Next to Carowinds Theater, we're going to have our last scare zone called The Hollow. It's full of pumpkins that are sick and tired of their friends being cut up, and they want to seek out revenge on you. This scare zone's pretty full of pumpkins, honestly, and they've got some really good scare actors. It's where I took last year's thumbnail for my video. This wall over here makes for a really good, like, Instagram picture, because all of these pumpkins have most all of them will be lit up and at night it looks super cool. Does anyone remember the scare zone that used to be in this little area right here under this canopy? It used to be like a junkyard theme like Blood Yard, but they haven't had it the last few years. Now over near Rip Roaring Rapids, or actually at Rip Roaring Rapids, they had a scare maze last year called The Reaping. And they had corn stalks up and people jumping out and scaring you through those corn stalks. That is not going to happen this year. The Reaping is not on the list of scare mazes for 2022 scare wins. And right next to that, it looks like we've got a store here with some scary stuff up in the windows. We've even got like uh, cemetery looking things out here. Looks like they might have some merch inside there. It looks like the amphitheater is being used for storage out here. I'm going to try to zoom in and give you a shot on this, but it looks like there's a lot of pumpkins and things out. Maybe there are more Scarewinds things that haven't been put out yet that will show up later. But I kind of wish they would utilize this theater for more stuff, like maybe get a band or something like that, do a stage show. I kind of miss coming out here and sitting in these chairs and watching a show. And thank you, Carowinds, for showing us a good time. Now that's going to wrap up our little mini update for Carowinds that included Scarewinds, Little Bit of Great Pumpkin Fest, and Aeronautica Landing. Hope you guys had fun going around looking at all the scare mazes, and I am really pumped for that scare maze called Paranormal, Activ Paranormal Inc. Sorry. The scare zones are starting to come together quite well. And I will see you all next weekend. We've got a media event and I'm going to be there for opening day of Scarewinds. So, hope you guys had fun, but thanks for playing. Bye.